aboard. Club call special. All aboard. Tonight, we offer the first of a new series of programs called the Club Car Special. The Club Car Special is based on the march of events and city life section of the Hearst Sunday newspapers throughout the country. This section is devoted to the cartoons and writings of America's foremost humorists. O.O. O. McIntyre, Will Rogers, George Ade, Sam Hellman, Arthur Bugs Bear, Milt Gross, Damon Runyon, and many others. So let's climb on board the Club Car Special right now, just for a lark and a laugh. <laughs> Now, while we're gathering speed, let's take a look at a cartoon. <laughs> here's one. Here's one that shows a picture of a bridal party. And everyone seems to be there but the bridegroom. The bride and her father seem considerably agitated. Oh, Daddy. Daddy, why doesn't he come? There, there, daughter. Don't weep. Everything will be all right. But the guests here, and the preacher's here, and I'm here, but where's Elmer? Oh, I just know something terrible has happened. Nothing terrible has happened. Now, just rest easily, dear. Oh, but it's dreadful. It's terrible. Oh, it, it's ghastly. Oh, I'm going to faint. She's fainted. Oh. Quick, some water. Give her air. Stand back there. She's fainted. Uh, ears, Walter. Sir, right here. Ah, thank you, Bodkins. That'll bring her to. The telephone. Quick, Bodkins, the telephone. It, it rocked away, see? She's coming to. She's coming oh, to. Oh, did I hear the phone? Yes, my dear. Bodkins is answering it. Well, maybe it's Elmer. Maybe it's Elmer. Uh, begging your pardon, sir. It is Elmer. What did he say? Uh, begging your pardon. He said he's been unavoidably detained, but to go right ahead without him. <laughs> you go, you hear people ask, did you read what Will Rogers said about repeal or about the recognition of Russia or about practically any subject under the sun? No matter what the issue, Will always seems to make just the right comment, a comment that not only carries a hearty laugh, but packs a philosophical wallop besides. Let's hear what Will's been saying lately. We'll ask Jerry Macy to let us have it. Come on, Jerry. You want it in dialect? Sure thing, Jerry. Why not? All right. Well, <laughs> you know, Will's a funny fella. You were talking about recognizing Russia a while ago. Well, Will's got to thinking about all the caviar that's imported from Russia. He says caviar is a kind of a gooey mess of fish eggs that is without doubt the poorest potter in the world. <laughs> <laughs> caviar costs a lot of money, and so the rich people lap it up just like the lap up grand opera without understanding a line of it. <laughs> the fish go to a lot of trouble to lay those eggs, especially when they go way up in Russia to lay them. <laughs> then Will goes on to say we got fish right here that must lay eggs, but we don't pay any more attention to them than we would to an American lecturer. The eggs our fish lay are just home talent. <laughs> <laughs> Will points out that you're supposed to eat caviar before a meal. But what he wants to know is if you got a good meal coming, what's the use of eating anything before it? <laughs> <laughs> he figures if the caviar was good, it would spoil your meal because you'd eat too much of it. And if it weren't any good, it would spoil your meal anyhow. <laughs> Good old Will Rogers, you can beat him. <laughs> well, Jerry, so that's your idea of Will Rogers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. Club calls prison. Next stop, George Gates. All aboard. <laughs> In 
In his article in the Hearst newspapers the other day, George A. tells about two men who met on the street in his hometown. One was a hardened old reprobate who never tried very much to be saved, and the other was the local pastor. And here's what happened. Good morning, Herman. Morning, Pastor Wiggins. I'm glad I run into you. Have you got a minute you can spare? Any time, Herman, any time. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, like this, Pastor, I was coming by the cemetery the other morning, and I got to thinking. Yes, Herman? I got to thinking about all them folks laying out there who used to go fooling around with pasteboards. Pasteboards? I mean they used to have a go at card plants. Yes, Herman? And back in their day, them things weren't allowed. Well, we're all a little more broad-minded now, Herman. Yeah, that's just what perplexes me, Pastor. Them folks went straight to the bad place. I know they did, because you told me so yourself. Yes, that's right, Herman. But now that shows and dancing are allowed, is all of them folks going to be let off on parole? <laughs> and if they is, who's going to issue the parole? <laughs> all aboard! Club call special. Next stop, old, old McIntyre. All aboard! O.O. McIntyre was a pioneer in writing syndicated New York columns. At first, the syndicate managers told him that a column devoted entirely to New York would not be popular elsewhere. Mr. McIntyre was so convinced that the managers were wrong that he operated his own syndicate from a room in a third-rate Broadway hotel and, in time, proved his point. He's now just as popular in Detroit and San Antonio as he is on Times Square. O.O. McIntyre knows his Broadway, and Billy Murray knows his O.O. McIntyre. Let's get Billy to give us a few slants on the famous main stem as seen through the eyes of its most observing columnists. A few columns ago, McIntyre was gossiping about some of the habits and mannerisms of the great and near great. He told about Billy Gaxton, the fellow who plays the part of President Wintergreen in that show called Let Him Eat Cake. He said Gaxton always squints his eyes when he sings, while Floyd Gibbons, whenever he's talking, always throws one of his coat lapels back. Charlie Chaplin always sits just on the edge of his chair, and John McCormick uh, carries a pocket comb. Maurice Chevalier is never seen without a bow tie. Norma Shearer never faces an audience. She nearly always shows a profile. Her husband, Irving Thalberg, is fond of going without a hat. Max Stoyer, the great New York attorney, when he speaks to a jury, talks with his hands uh, behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> Then there's Walt Disney, the fellow who went to Hollywood and made so much money with Mickey Mouse. Uh, Disney is a modest fellow who has lived in the very same house the whole time he's been out there. Further on in his column, he mentions Sinclair Lewis, the fellow who created the name Babbitt. A Babbitt, according to Sinclair Lewis, is any sort of feeble-witted guy who lives in the suburbs and leads a routine life of three square meals a day and commutes and carries a briefcase and an umbrella. <laughs> well, McIntyre says Sinclair Lewis is now living in Bronxville, a suburb of New York, and commutes with a briefcase and an umbrella and everything. <laughs> oh, here's a, a funny one, too. Cary Grant, the fellow who plays opposite Mae West, Used to be a stilt walker at Coney Island. Maybe that's why May is always asking him to come up sometime. <laughs> well, that's the kind of stuff McIntyre's always digging up for his readers. I wouldn't miss him for anything. All of us can't meet all the famous people he knows, but when he tells about them, it's the next best thing to meeting them. Everyone knows Milt Gross, the creator of Count Screwloose and Dave's Delicatessen. Tonight he tells the story of a racketeer named Chowderface Glutz, who's on trial for blowing up a fruit stand owned by Angelo Peep. Now it seems that Angelo refused to buy the necessary protection from Chowderface, and as a result, a pineapple was tossed into Angelo's bananas and put him out of business. The accused is now on the witness stand, and his lawyer is trying to prove that his client is really a tender-hearted babe, even though he does resemble the big bad wolf. 
Chowderface is trying equally hard to remember all the answers. Now tell me, Chowderface, what songs do you like best? Silver treads among the gold and Mother McCree. They always makes me cry. What else do you like, Chowder? Well, for instance, the story of the little match coil, boys and flowers, and little Annie Rooney in the funny pictures on account of its a little coil. Now, tell us in your own words, Chowder, about this day on which you were supposed to have blown up Angelo's fruit stand. Well, first I wake up in the morning and I fed the little boys that comes on me window so every morning with breadcrumbs. Go on. Then, then I, uh, I listen to Jolly Bill and Janie on the radio. I like Jolly Bill and Janie on account of Janie as a little girl. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and then what did you do? Then I practices on me cello like I promised me mother I always would. And then, then I went out and helped a old lady across the street with a bundle. And then I went to the town hall and I went to the town hall to... Uh, yes, go on. Now, you went to the town hall, and uh, what did you go to the town hall for? I, I went to the town hall, and uh, kinda, they had a play there, what was called uh, Alice in Wonderland. I like Alice in Wonderland, and uh, kinda, she's a little girl what's got a rabbit. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. And what did you do after that? After that, I goes home and... Place part cheesy with me grandmother, like I promised me mother I always would. Go on, Chowder. Well, then uh, it was nine o'clock, and I went to bed and dreamed about the three little pigs. And I never seen this guy, Angelo, with a fruit stand in all me life. That's all, Chowder. And now, gentlemen of the jury, behold this boy. It is not he who is on trial, it is us. It is all civilization that is on trial. We dragged him down here. Let us see the light and send him back to his coal black mammy. I mean, to that little cabin in the cotton, uh, to that little gray mother who waits. Gentlemen, I cannot go on. I arrest my case. I throw this gentle flower that civilization has crushed beneath its heels upon your tender mercies. Gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? Yeah, Your Honor. How do you find the defendant, gentlemen? Guilty. Did you say guilty? Yeah, Your Honor, on account of we don't like little goils with rabbits. <laughs> well, we've come to the end of tonight's run of the Club Car Special. Don't forget to be on the platform next week at this same time and enjoy the fun and nonsense of America's leading humorists. O.O. McIntyre, George Aide, Will Rogers, Damon Runyon, Bugs Bear, Sam Hellman, Milt Gross, and all the others whose writings and cartoons appear in the March of Events and City Life section of the Hearst Sunday newspapers throughout the country. Laugh with the club car special on your radio. And better still, enjoy the features themselves each week in the Hearst Sunday newspaper in your community.